Hi, I'm uh, Niklas from BitSquid and in this tutorial I'm going to show how to add flow to a unit. So in a previous tutorial I showed how you could add flow to a level and get add things like triggers to a level that trigger a particular unit to spawn. Uh, you can do things like having trigger plates that start platforms moving, open doors, key cards that you can pick up and so on. Uh, so that's all things you can do by adding flow to a level. Now I look at what you can do by adding flow to a particular unit. So adding flow to a unit is something you do when you want a particular unit to always uh, show some particular behaviors. So to show this off I'll just spawn a unit in this level. Uh, I'll use this uh, physics boulder. Uh, have a place to place it in the level. Um, to get this, this is a physical object, and to get it uh, resting nicely on the ground, I just uh, select it, and from the edit menu, I run simulate physics. I can now simulate actual, uh, run an actual physics simulation on this object, and let it fall down naturally and rest on the ground. So that way, I know it's in a stable state for the physics. So if I want to do something with this unit. I can select it in flow, uh, right click it and select create unit flow node to bring a flow node for this unit into flow. As you can see I get a flow node here of the type level unit. So here I could do something particular for this unit. I could uh, connect the connect, uh, physics push for example. Uh, so that I push this unit, I push it upwards, uh, like certain velocity, and I push it with 100 kilograms of mass, uh, I push it when the level is loaded, uh, with a delay of, say, 2 seconds. And then I can connect back the out node from the delay node to the in node, which means that the delay node will re-trigger every two seconds and retweak trigger this push every two seconds. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. Now this, I'm right now I'm still uh, I'm still working completely in the level flow, so I'm doing stuff that on on the level. So on the level, I've set this particular unit to jump every two seconds. Uh, for this particular instance of this unit. But what if jumping is a behavior that I want this object to always be capable of? If I want to do that, I can add it to the flow for this unit. And everything I add to this flow to the flow for this unit will be able will be available for all instances of this unit. And I can do that by opening the unit editor for this unit. So I right click this unit and select open unit. Uh, this will bring up the unit editor uh, with this physics folder unit. Uh, from the window menu in the unit editor, I can select flow. Uh, the flow for this unit is now completely empty. There are no predefined behaviors for this unit. Uh, but I want to add that. So to do that, I first add an external input event. So this is what this means is that this is some kind of events that can come from the outside to this unit. Something outside of this unit can tell this unit to do something. Uh, this event needs a name, so I'll give it a name like jump. Because uh, that's what I want this unit to be able to do. Uh, now I want to connect this up to some action. Uh, I actually want to reuse the push action here I had in the uh, level editor, so I'll just bring up the flow here and copy the push, push action. Uh, copy paste works normally in flow as you would expect, undo as well, of course. Paste that push action in here, uh, connect the output here to the input node. Uh, I also need to set what unit to affect. Now, since I'm working in the unit editor, there is a special choice here if I click the edit button is called my unit and what that means is that this will affect the very instance of this unit that that is formed so this means i will push myself 
uh, with this force. So what we've done now is we've added a common behavior to all units of this type. All of them are able to jump if something external tells them to jump. So we can save this. I close it down. I'll go back into the level editor and I'll choose uh, reload all resources. This means I'm reloading all the units uh, in the game, so any changes I made are now available to the level editor. If I go back into the flow view here, uh, you see that on this level unit node, I now have a connector called jump. So this action that I defined in the unit flow is now available to be used by the level flow. So instead of having the push event in the level flow, I can now just connect this to the jump node. And as I said, the nice thing about this is that the jump behavior is now available on all physics boulders. So everywhere I spawn a boulder, if I, let's say I bring in a, let's say I close this here, and I make a copy of this boulder, and create the flow node for this copy, you will see that the flow node for this copy also has this jump event, so I can just connect it up as well to get them both to jump. So every every boulder in the game now has the capability of, of jumping. Uh, and a nice thing about doing flow this way is that if you want to change uh, the jump behavior in some way, for example you may want to add a, an effect to it so that it spawns a, a puff of smoke when it jumps or something like that, you may want to add a sound to jumping, you can just do that in the flow of the unit, and all of the units uh, in the game will automatically get this updated behavior, they will get the effect and the sound. So if I press F5 here again, uh, you can see that both of these units are now jumping through this event. I actually need to watch out a bit for those, because I think they will kill Hamilton if they touch him. So, what's interesting about using Flow in this way is that we actually, in the BitSquared engine, we use Flow as the, as the main switchboard for all kinds of events. So whenever you have some kind of event happening in the game, and you want to con connect that up to some behavior, you use Flow. Uh, so the input events can be, for example, things like a physics collision, if we have, uh, I can right-click this, this is physics object here, and I can create a collision flow node for it. And I will then get a flow node that uh, that triggers an event when the when this object uh, touches something. So I can connect that event up to something. If you have animation, you can get events from the animation and connect uh, connect that up to other actions. So in this way you can connect all kinds of events from all, all parts of the game to actions, to sound effects, uh, logic actions, physic effects, and all other things that you might, uh, might want to do. Uh, so in a, future, in a future tutorial I'm going to show, show how you can actually make your very own uh, flow nodes uh, from using LuaScript. And that way you can uh, define a completely custom behavior and make that available to your level designers and artists. So, thanks for me.